Welcome to this edition of Miles Ahead, and this time we're looking at the new Audi RS3. Now, the thing you're going to notice straight away is that it is yellow, Python yellow, so I have dressed down to balance things out. Regular viewers will know I'm normally a beacon of fashion. But anyway, this car comes in at £61,000. So this is a launch edition. Audi have made around about 100 of those in this, the saloon version, and also the hatchback version. Um, and that's £6,000 above the base level RS3 price. Um, sits above the carbon black, but below the Vorsprung editions. So what do you get for your money? Let's dive in and have a closer look around. Um, so the python yellow is the only optional extra on this car that's 575 pounds otherwise everything is standard as part of the launch pack all these black effects around here come with that and the blacked out headlights around here as well uh, as we come around the side you get these i really like these wheels I've, i feel like i say it with every review of audi we do i really like their wheels but these matte black 19 inch wheels are absolutely stunning i think and you get the red brake calipers as well as part of it but there's a one cool feature on this is you get the uh, self-leveling hubcaps as well a little bit rolls royce so that it's always staying in the same place um, but as we come around it's got the black wing mirrors uh, you get the panoramic roof as well part of the launch edition pack and you get the blacked out rear windows as well now i think the black offsets quite nicely against this python yellow paintwork it has really grown on me i must admit i did when it first arrived on the job i was like what are the neighbors going to think but actually I've, I've come to really like it i think it's a good looking car and there's something sort of hot wheels proportions about it on that side the wheels i think they've judged them quite nicely i think 20s would have been far too big for this car 19s are just on the edge of acceptability in my opinion anyway well we're here we'll have a quick look in the back so the driving position is in is set for me i'm six foot two if i dive in here it's not that bad back here actually um i've got a little bit of knee room headroom's fine um you get a couple of usb-c charges back here and that sort of thing but i think you'd be all right in there for a long journey some um, those the rs sports seats are very comfortable in these cars i do quite like them anyway we'll come around the back so you get this black lip at the back as well and the sports exhausts as well are fitted standard with the launch edition model um, and they do sound quite good which we will touch upon in the drive along section of the video and while we're here we'll just have a quick look in the boot uh, as you can see you can get a cricket bag in there you'd probably even get two cricket bags in there uh, we did the big shop at costco yesterday got everything in there absolutely fine um only complaint about the aesthetics at the back i think it's a shame they haven't done the badges in black as well you'd get them in black with the carbon black but they haven't done it for launch edition not sure why but it's a very very minor complaint as well i should add i think otherwise this is quite a good looking car from all angles but anyway let's see what it's like inside so this is the driver's seat of the Audi RS3 and it's typically Audi up here which is no bad thing I do like their interiors the MMI cockpit I'm a big fan of works really well in here you get very customizable views across here to see what you want to see and these menus are very easy to use um, but there is a very clear hierarchy to Audi on the interiors you get the thumping performance in the RS3 as you do with the RS5 the RS6 the RS7 the RS Q8 but you know this, this is where you start to feel the hierarchy is definitely on the inside so you get this sort of you get the touch buttons down here it's all very intuitive and easy to use and you get this lovely touch screen at the top if you moved up to the rs5 you get a bit of haptic feedback on the buttons here it's just you know a little bit nicer thought out and then when you get up to the rs6 rs7 rs q8 you get the dual touch screen setup which i really really like but if you prefer you know physical buttons then rs5 rs3 are the direction to go um it's quite a minimalist vibe down here we reviewed the audi q4 e-tron sport back last year exactly the same setup here um i quite like it it's very easy to use you've got a touchpad for doing the volume on the stereo here start stop button and you select your gears using this thing here as well so i don't mind that but um it's the further you come down here you can see where the cost cuttings come in so there's a lot of lot of scratchy plastics around and particularly when you get into the door bins as well so that'll come through on the audio probably too loudly um, and all the bits that are out of sight you know that's you know it's quite cheap feeling i guess um but this is really an a3 isn't it um you get a bit of storage space in here underneath the armrest one good thing they've got though that uh this this locks into a higher position so you can have have the armrest a bit higher depending on where you want to rest your elbows for your driving position that's really good the seats are electrically adjustable as well and um, plenty of movement in them as well as i mentioned they're very comfortable in the back they are also very comfortable up top as well you also get heated seats in the front as well um steering wheel manually adjustable um but there is plenty of movement in it to keep things 
where you want them to be. I say that as I try to pull it back out again. Um, so you can find, you know, a very good driving position very easily in this. Um, so I think of other things to say. I mean, it's fitted with the comfort and sound pack as part of the launch edition. Uh, that brings the Bang & Olufsen sound system most pertinently to this. That does a really good job. Uh, I think it's quite a good sound system. Um, it says, yeah, definitely a nice to have. And as I mentioned, the walk round, you get this nice panoramic roof as well, which is yeah, always nice to have, especially when you get a bit of better weather like this. Um, so all in all, you can see that this does sit at the bottom of the sort of RS hierarchy. Um, so yeah, as you mentioned, go RS3 to RS5 to RS67, RSQ8. You know, the interior upgrade is definitely the um, the biggest point to note as you go through them. So yeah, you know, this is at the bottom of the pile. That's not to say it's not nice in here, I do like it. And they've got the driving layout absolutely sussed out, in my opinion. I think it's so easy to navigate through the wheels. Having this RS button here as well is great. So you've got the adaptive uh, drive select, that's part of the launch edition as well. We'll touch upon that a bit more on the drive along, uh, but it brings the adaptive suspension as well, which is something unique because it's quite a stiff ride. Um, so yeah, when you're in town, you definitely want to get it into comfort. But with RS, you can, you know, you can tailor things to your individual preferences. So if you're just toodling along in comfort, you spot the opportunity for an overtake, press the RS button, Bam delivers all 400 PS on demand, which is very handy. Um, and on that, it's probably time to see what it's like to drive. Right, so what's the Audi RS3 like to drive? Well, we'll start with the engine note. Not bad, it's quite characterful. It's the inline five, it's a two and a half litre engine, produces 400 PS, which is enough to send this car from standstill to 60 in just 3.8 seconds. So it is not slow, and obviously has a Quattro all-wheel drive contributes to that as well. But even in comfort, even in efficiency, it's a very lively car. It's a very, very willing runner, always straining at the leash. It's reminded me a little bit of a wild pig that's been disturbed in the woods. You know, you're just going along, it's quiet, undisturbed, and then you suddenly you give it a quick stab on the throttle and go, ah, oh, oh hell breaks loose and it goes in every direction. Um, so, you know, it's got that playful character. It steps out of line a bit on the edge as well, which something like the RS5 doesn't do at all. This does get a bit leery. It's very much the aggressive, annoying, younger sibling of the Audi RS range. And I quite like it for that. It's got its own charm and it's endearing in its own way. Um, I'll talk about the suspension now um, because you do need the adaptive suspension on this because it is very firm. Um, when you come into a town and you've left it in RS mode, you realise as soon as you hit the first speed bump, oh my God, right, and you're reaching for the drive modes to get it back into comfort. I mean, it's still firm in comfort. You do get knocked about a bit, but I think that's to be expected of a car that's trying to achieve what this is trying to achieve. You know, there's nothing out of the ordinary with it. And that firmness, obviously, you get the payback when you are in more aggressive guise and you're looking to stand on it a little bit. Then it comes back and pays back with dividends on what it's capable of. Um, the steering is a little bit light, that could be a bit more involving, as too could the paddles for the gearbox. Um, this is a complaint across the VW group, they don't do very good paddles. Um, you compare it to what you'd get in an Alfa Romeo, you get these lovely big brushed, brushed metal gear levers that insist upon themselves, they just beg to be used, whereas these are a bit, Ooh, we're here. you can use us if you like, and that's a bit of a shame because it does have the seven speed box, and if I flick it back round to RS, it does change down the gears. It gives you exactly what you want when you want it, which, you know, not every car does that. Sometimes they don't change down with each press of the, of the paddle. This does, so I'm surprised they don't have it as an optional extra that you could upgrade for a couple of hundred quid and get bigger pronounced panels that would, you know, undoubtedly add to the engagement of the experience. But otherwise, I mean, the driving setup here is perfect. I do like this leather steering wheel, very comfortable in your hands. The steering is very accurate as well, so it's very easy to place through corners and all that sort of thing. And you get the head-up display as well. Um, so going to sort of more mundane driving, the MPG that you achieve in this car is actually very good. Um, if you're doing a long motorway run and you had it in efficiency and you're sort of doing, you know, 70, 75, I think you'd be easily looking at mid-30s, if not early 40s on MPG. Uh, so my long-term memory for this, I have been giving it a bit of poke as well. Uh, we've done 151.7 miles and we've achieved 25.8 MPG. Now, I don't think that's too bad for a car like this at all. Um, given the performance you've got to call upon, 
yeah, it's, it's not bad. Um, and you know, you've got four seats, you've got Isofix, you can do all the family stuff and you can get it out to a country road, get it back into RS, stand on the throttle and it does, <laughs> everything picks up again. And it is, yeah, it's really good fun. Um, like I mentioned, you know, it is the aggressive younger sibling of the Audi RS range. And, you know, it gets a bit lively on the edges and it's playful and it's, you know, it's endearing. It's got its own distinct characteristic and I've definitely come to really, really enjoy it for that. And it's been on the drive and I've been looking at it thinking, I do want to get out and now, I do want to go out and drive it. You think, mm, where can I take it this time? And I think a car like this should elicit that sort of emotion in you. And yeah, this, this definitely does. It's a bit of a hooligan and yeah, it's good fun for it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, and also consider subscribing. We've got loads of videos on the channel, and we've got loads more coming up as well, and it would be great to see you again soon. Thanks.